Hi, I'm Diane Cometa, and today on Dishing with Di, I'm gonna show you how to make my chocolate meringue cookies. These are crisp and light, chocolatey, and easy to make. So let's get started on Dishing with Di. You only need a few ingredients for this recipe. Now the first and the most important thing are some egg whites at room temperature. And you either need a stand mixer or a hand mixer. And the important part is the bowl. Do not use a plastic bowl. Plastic can retain residues and that could inhibit the egg whites from beating up. And that's what we're, you know, our goal is here to get these babies nice and fluffy. So into the clean bowl of your mixer with the whisk attachment, you're going to pour in your egg whites and then you're going to beat these on medium speed until they become a little foamy. Once they foam up, then you're going to take some salt and you're going to add that to the mix. And this is going to help the egg whites to stabilize. Now you're just going to beat it a little bit longer until you form soft peaks and then we'll start adding in some sugar. My egg whites have come to soft peaks. It's kind of foamy looking, and then when you lift it up, the egg white kind of just like flops over. So you can see that in the bowl. And now the sugar that I'm going to be adding is white granulated sugar, but it's super fine sugar. Now if you can't find super fine sugar or you don't have it, all you gotta do is take white regular granulated sugar and put that into a food processor or possibly a blender and mix that up and blend it until it, the crystals become really super fine. So we're gonna add this in a little bit at a time, about a tablespoon at a time. So what I like to do is kinda go at a steady pace here. And try not to get it all around the edges of the bowl. Once you get about half of your sugar added in, I like to give the bowl a little scrape. And that's just so that if any sugar shot up around the edges, I just want to kind of keep that down because you don't want that there at the very end of this whole mixing process and happen to have it like fall into the end result. So at this point, I'm going to continue to mix. I'm going to rinse this off and I'm going to continue to add my sugar in. Once all the sugar is added, give it another scrape. Again, just around the edges. Let's make sure everything is down there in the bowl where it should be. And now we're gonna turn the mixer up and we're gonna beat this until it forms stiff peaks and it's nice and glossy. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now this is what you're looking for. This is uh, firm peaks and it's nice and glossy and you wanna test it by just taking a little bit and rubbing it between your fingers. And if you feel any gritty sugar there, then you wanna just keep beating it a little bit more until that goes away. So it's fine, it's nice and smooth now. And I wanted to tell you that you do need to have your oven preheated to 225 degrees, and you want at least one baking sheet lined with some parchment paper for this. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add in some pure vanilla extract. And I like to do this with the mixer off, and then you're gonna mix this through thoroughly and you want to just get that really well combined. You might have to give it a little scrape because sometimes even if you do it with the mixer off, the uh, vanilla extract kind of splashes up on the side and that's why I do it with the mixer off so it doesn't get all over the place. These are gonna be so good. Doesn't that look great? It reminds me of that marshmallow fluff stuff. So now for the last ingredient, that looks like it's really well mixed through now. We're gonna add in the cocoa powder. So this is some unsweetened cocoa powder that I have here, and I'm not just gonna pour it right in there. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna sift it in. And I wanna do that because I wanna make sure that there's no lumps. I'm just gonna take this out just for a second. And I wanna kinda dust it over the top. I don't want it to go in like one big blob. So this way you get it sifted and then you also um, make sure that it's distributed evenly. So just kind of dust it around there. I have another recipe for mint chocolate chip meringue cookies and they are just out of this world. So make sure you check that one out too. I think you'll like it. All right, so that's good. 
Now I'm gonna throw my little whisk attachment back on and I'm just gonna mix this until the powdery uh, cocoa powder disappears and then I'm gonna fold it in the rest of the way with my spatula. I have my baking sheet that I've lined with some parchment paper and before I put this on here, I'm just gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna put it under each corner to just keep this parchment paper still because the last thing we want is to pick this up and have the whole thing slide all over the place. So you just kind of use that as like some glue. That should be good. Now I have a piping bag. You can use a regular plastic disposable bag, but I have a piping bag here and I have a large star tip on the end and you don't need to use a star tip if you don't want to, you could just use it without, but I prefer to use it because we're gonna make what is called chocolate kisses with this. And you need the star tip to do that. Okay, so I just wanna fill this up. Now on your baking sheet, what you wanna do is just kinda go down and then pull this straight up just like that. Okay, you can, if you want to, kind of go around and bring it up, make a little design. Now, if you don't have a piping bag, then what you want to do is get a couple spoons and just go like this and just kind of put it on there and just kind of make a little design with it like that. Okay, so either way, you're just going to go around and pipe these an inch or two apart. They are gonna uh, puff up a little bit, so you don't want them right on top of each other because then they'll touch. So just fill up your baking sheet. Once you get them all on your baking sheet, then you're gonna put them on the center rack in your preheated 225 degree oven for 45 minutes. Then, without opening the door, you're gonna turn the oven off and leave them in there for four to six hours, preferably overnight, which would be more like 12 hours. Now, that is to ensure that they are completely dried out. You want these things to be nice and crisp. If you take them out too early, what happens is the outside is crisp, and then you go to bite into the inside, and it's kind of like gooey and gummy, and it doesn't really taste that good. So make sure you dry them out really well, but I already made some yesterday, and here they are. They're all nice and crispy and light, and they're absolutely delicious. And let me just give one a little taste. Mmm, you hear that? Mmm. My son said that these remind him of hot chocolate. So just to give you an idea of the flavor. They're really yummy, really delicious, and they can be stored, whoops. <laughs> They're really crisp. They can be stored in an airtight bag or an airtight container, and I've had them for about a week before, so you can make these ahead no problem. The recipe is on my website, dishingwithdye.com, and I hope I made your life a little easier, more enjoyable, and delicious. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.